So you can have, again, y x sub x deron over <coughs> x deron is, well, a free stack. You can, well, we introduced, in this case, this horizontal sections. The sections of this map. And it's a object and drag algebra geometry, the mapping space. So, <laughs> so that's one thing you can do. And another thing you can do if you, well, and it's, it's just a space. It's not over anything. It's just as it is. But so now, let me also introduce the following notation. So I'll have a space which lives over x i deram, and I'll call it sections uh, horizontal, but not over x deram, but x deram minus, if you wish, the universal point. So what does this? As we wrote multiple million times, this parameterizes, well, for a scheme S, you, you pick I, S, reduced points of X, and you will be considering sections over the punctured, over the punctured curve. So this is, this is what, what I mean by this. So you can, the general construction you can do, and we'll apply it to Y. Is, the, is that okay, people? Are people okay? So X deram without the, well, it's my notation, the graph of the universal point. So you see over x i deram, you have the universal point of x i deram. So again, for, it's a, it's a, yeah, so again, it's a pre-stack over x i deram, whose s points are described as follows. You fix, you take an s point of this, then on s times x, you have a divisor. You remove this divisor and take sections over that. You see what I mean? Is that from a factorization thing? No, 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 no. That's very important. Like, this is global. Yeah, I'm taking maps of the global thing. It does not factorize at all. However, in any such situation, so you have, so you have x sections horizontal. x deram y x deram multiplied by x i deram that has a map to well jets y x deram i so you can evaluate a, a global guy at a point on the onto a local guy again kind of substitute you'll see this map which <coughs> We, this map was used, for example, when we constructed this functal lock. We mapped log sys to kind of this product of, on the, of, of local system on the functional disk. So that's exactly the evaluation map. So you had a map from s times x to your y, and you restricted to the formal disk. And similarly, you have maps like this. You can take sections horizontal, as we just said, on x deram minus the universal point. And that will have, so it's a map which lives over xi deram, and this will have evaluation map in, into jets. Y x deram i. All right. Even okay? You're fine? So now we, we're going to apply it to y x deram being our well, D scheme of opers. And we obtain, so we obtain the following notions. So we I define op <coughs> regular glob of G, well, to be the cor that corresponding thing. It's sections horizontal sections uh, over x deram of this uh, so 
these are <coughs> global operas, regular global operas, and similarly defined meromorphic global operas, G, well, it, that lives over x to the i, well, uh, just plug in into this definition. minus the universal point of my opers. And according to what we said, there are evaluation maps from global opers to opal opers. So fix it. write a couple of diagrams, so it will be Oprah's regular global times x to the i drum will map to regular local. Yeah, uh, Sergei. So we introduced so we introduced we introduced the D scheme at the very beginning of the talk, and I'm saying I'm taking sections of that D scheme. So remember there was a discussion of plug in Y to be op. No, no, no. So again, all were descendants of one. There were D scheme of opers, and I took jets into it. So you can take jets, you can take global sections, and I'm saying that for any Y you have evaluation from global sections into jets. So I have this, and I have, okay, so then, and then I have Oper's meromorphic global I, and that has an evaluation map to Oper's meromorphic <coughs> local I, and now remember, in here, we defined Oprah's un unramified local. And now you define global unramified Oprah's to be the, pull the pullback. So these were meromorphic guys. They evaluate to meromorphic guys. Inside, you take local unramified guys. And so this is definition of global unramified Oprah's. So, okay, so this is the definition. So now, so you can, so the next, so this can, is, can potentially put you to sleep, but please don't fall asleep because it's kind of, it's an important point here now. Okay, so remember that I said that just the factorization scheme of, well, maps to the factorization scheme log sys, log sys d. And this factorization scheme looks is G. And that was defined as jets into something. And if you take horizontal sections of that something, you'll get log cis. So kind of. So therefore, if you take regular global guys at the level of global sections, you'll map to the global log cis on your curve. What I'm doing again. So, <coughs> this and this are both factorization spaces that are jets into something. And 
So in this case, it's this D scheme of opers. In this case, is is the constant D stack BG times X. And you take horizontal sections of both, and you, you get a map like this. So, and that's kind of cheap. However, so in here, please don't fall asleep because it's an important place. I want to say that if you do... You say, wake up. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> Indeed. So I claim that if you take meromorphic global opers, it will map to the, again, so this will be a map over xi deram. Xi universal. So it's like, oh, you just missed. You, pardon? Yeah, so you take out the graph. It's a punctured curve. So, you see, this shouldn't be very obvious. Let me ask, revert to the middle school mode, Braverman. How do you define this map? This wasn't in the homework. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. It isn't... It, Indeed. So that's my question. So okay, let's. So, so Roma will. Okay. So why don't you try to? I is one, uh, I is two. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Fig it's, uh, yeah. Fix one point. So why is it obvious? Okay. Let's. Okay. No. No. Okay. Let's decipher the definition. These are uh, meromorphic. So see, I have this. So I have this D scheme. Okay, you know what, so kind of, it'll take us too much time. It, it is, so let me tell you what's non-obvious here. So there is something that's swept under the carpet. Uh, um, well, at the very beginning of my talk, I said that, oh, consider this D scheme of opers. So we said that D scheme of opers such that to map Y to it is the same as to have a G oper on Y, and I gave the definition. So. Now, this definition was all right. The problem was that, uh, so, leave it as is. Okay, it's kind of obvious. Let me, let me say like this. So it's just, if you, if, you have to do some thinking through when you write it down carefully. But it, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, the word connection is forbidden in direct algebraic geometry. Oh, but there's a usual connection. Okay. <laughs> go, go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what this makes it, uh, what, in scheme? Uh, so, global guys, this is an in scheme. Uh, yeah. Yeah, both are in schemes, but this is this is in scheme of infinite type. <coughs> Pardon me? They just map to Wait, why is local system in, in this scheme? Oh, sorry, in stack. Uh, well, yeah. All right, and so, so we have this diagram, this diagram, and there's one more diagram to write. So we have Oper's meromorphic global i, as we just said, it maps to the space on this curve with a moving puncture. 
And inside to here, you have a map from, well, globally defined local systems. And if you look at these definitions, the fiber product will be um, unramified. So global and ramified opers are exactly those meromorphic opers such that the underlying local system is is regular. So this is what this is what Sasha wanted from the beginning. So it's kind of in the sense it's easy to give the definition. It, it'll be again. So again, it's a good exercise. I don't know who of you will be willing to do this exercise. Just try to give write down the complete scheme theoretic definition of of this. So you start with a local system, and then you have to specify an upper structure away from this well ever, away from punctures. But, and by the way, this will involve something that Daria was talking about. It will involve this, this bun, bun G, B, gen. Because your B, your reduction to B, is not defined at your chosen point. But now, say what is just your K point? Y yeah. Well, because you can extend the B structure, and then it's easy to say what they, what they are. But in families, again, your B reduction is really not defined at these points. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's it's a very nice exercise to do because well that that's what I'm that's what I'm that's what I mean. So it's like if you do this exercise you'll see why this is act well uh, you'll see why this is an in scheme. So you can do okay, let's just say one word. You can, instead of bun B gen you'll be using some kind of bun B bar with poles. Well, and because I'm fixing the points where I'm allowing the generation, it'll be bun B bar with poles. I'm saying that to Sasha. Now, if you look at bun B bar with poles, you must allow the generation to other points also. But the open condition will forbid those. So it's, it's, it's that kind of thing. All right, so we are almost ready to... Could the connection... Oper condition. This is the right definition, but however, it's not clear this is an in scheme. Because, as you know, to saying that B bundle with a reduction away from certain specified points, that's not an. No, no, I want the B bundle everywhere. Uh, that's, that's not the right I definition. That won't be the right definition. No, that'll be exactly the problem of bun B versus bun B gen. You'll split it up in the connected components that you don't want to. So you don't want to do that. So your B model really must not be defined. All right. So wake up again. Forget everything. So let we are ready to define the objects of interest. Indeed, it's almost breakfast time. So what do we have? So we have this Oprah's unramified glob. I, and we have these two maps of interest. There is a map to log, global log cis on my curve times um, xi deram, and I call this map, let me call it vi, and there's evaluation map to local guys. And ramified local, uh, let me call ui. And so we're gonna use this diagram. Okay, so now, so this is the geometric input that we have. I lost the, oh no. So I said at the beginning that this, this category is similar to the Whitaker model, but at this point it might not be obvious. Category. There's no category. But there will be. So you consider int co. And there will be functor of direct image, int co direct image. Well, it 
a priori it goes to int cove quasi looks quasi int cove looks is you check well <laughs> yeah so let me, I'll compose this map with a projection to pardon Great question. Over irreducible local systems. Over the irreducible locus. So this will go a priori to int cove loxis g check, g check g. But you can show that in fact the image lands in quasi cove, which sits inside int cove and means the sign. Yeah. Yeah. So this map sends all of int code to quasi code. It kills, so kind of, you get nothing. Is it some transpose? No, it's, um, so this is here Will you need something like derived Tataki to understand it. No time to go into it, just take it as an. No, it's you really need to think about the singular support. Well, no, no, okay. So this is also quasi smooth, and you can so it follows from one of the theorems that Dima, Dima did. So Dima d gave it the upper estimate from above what happens with singular support, and you can use this theorem to see what happens. And again, so this story is about quasi code, not about int code. So you have this map. Now, okay, now I want to say int co of the global guys, of the local guys. See, and here we didn't have a problem of int code because this is, uh, well, it's slightly stacky because it lives over, in fact, it's not even stacky. It's so it's an int scheme of int finite types. So this is really well defined. So now we have this unramified local, and I want to say int co, but then what do I mean? So this is not of int finite type. This has this. It looks like jets into something. So what do I mean by this? So I kind of, in these notes for my talk on Katsmudi, I wrote out the definitions kind of you can give for int co. And so what happens is that, so this, so it's kind of affine over x to the i, and it's, it's and this affine scheme is what's called placid. So I don't know if anyone looked at these notes. There's a particular class. So if, well, we need int co in, in, in finite type, and you can develop it for a class of, well, schemes and in schemes that are called placid. And it's, it's, a property not, it's a property, not a structure. But, and again, so I'm referring to these notes. I, well, they have some contents. But if you have a placid <coughs> scheme and in scheme, there are two versions of int co. There's a star version and the shriek version of the int co. So placid, what placid basically means that you can exhibit your scheme as a, an inverse limit of schemes of finite types under smooth maps. And your int co will be, you can create a co-limit on either under upper shriek functors or upper star functors. And it, you end up in two different categories. And so star means that you use upper star functors. Again, something from these notes. And this int co with a star has the property that direct images are always defined. So you can always define u ui. Yes. So this functor is always defined, but the property of this particular D scheme namely it's because it's isomorphic to jets into something that you can show that this functor admits a left adjoint. And so this is really a red herring, this guy. So we are not, so star pullback on incoherent sheaves is defined in very, very rare circumstances. You kind of, on s for schemes, star pullback will be defined if your map is, is of finite tor dimension. And this is basically what happens. So it just so happens that this map UI is such that well, this direct image has a right adjoint, which is star pulled back on int co. <coughs> Pardon? Well, left adjoints are always continuous. It's the problem not continuity, but, but uh, being defined. And so now you have this functor.
Pardon? Pardon? Doesn't that form for Oh, so left adjoint always has this property. So left adjoint is. So now you can form this functor int co lower so and it's a functor from so this version the star version of int co to quasi co Loxis G check. Oxys G. And so it is this category that I say I declare to be the analog of the Whitaker category, not the analog, I mean the Galois limit of the Whitaker category. And it's this that I call the Poincare functor. Well, not for a fixed set I when you do it over the run space. So this is Poincare G spectral definite. Star. I, I meant that, so I said that there are two versions of the int co category, and um, it's the star version. So, and kind of the, the fact that you have this difference between star and shriek, they're really different. This is the indication that you, this is why you can't really define, kind of make sense of these kind of. So, questions were asked why can't we do directly things in infinite, not not in finite type, and that's the indication. So you get really two different categories. No, no, it's, see, no, what, what I mean, no, it's, so you have this very parameter kappa, when kappa is away from infinity, you'll, get, you'll be getting the Whitaker categories. And when kappa hits infinity, you get this. I Things become very, very commutative. I have a kind of contradiction in my head because at the same time, somehow, what happens is, for some reason, when you make kappa become infinity, the more you get here, it becomes much bigger. Yes, so again, let me just explain. So, wit for g at level kappa is kajdan lustig, g check at level 1 over kappa. Yeah, so as soon as, as long as kappa is not infinity, um, kappa is not infinity, this is not, this is not critical, and both categories are relatively small. Oh, I see. This is when this becomes infinity, this becomes critical, this is the kajdan lustig category at the critical level, okay, and, really and you have this l super large center, and that's how, like, th that's, that's how it's explained. Incoherent, or what? So I'm saying that this map has a property that it sends everything to to quasi to quasi co. But in the end, we said that we want that the essential image will be generated. No, so the generators will be two kinds of generators. It will be these generators, and it will be Eisenstein series. So the Eisenstein series will cover all your NILP for you. So the NILP come from Eisenstein series. And then we know that this is on the other side. Well, there's Eisenstein series also, yeah. So what we know, okay, I'll, let me just state the, just one second. Your job, get, getting a. Well, these are not cuspid. You, you, you get more than cuspid. These are, so these guys are tempered. So let me just say what Doreen is saying. So let me do the round version of this. So we have, yeah, let me just one more remark about analogy with Whitaker. So uh, when the level is not infinity, how to say it? So our Poincaré functor, as Dario defined, was just direct image. There was no intermediary. At just in, at level, infinite level, we go through this intermediate category. That's again, kind of a purely commutative phenomenon. Like there is nothing like op glob in the Whitaker, the pre previous Whitaker story. So the usual Whitaker story, kind of one that deforms, you only have this and this and the composed functor. It's only at level infinity that you can split it, in, split it into, into composition. 
OK, so now let, let's do the run version of this. So we have int co star. Yeah. Again, so Dima gave a condition. Yeah. So we have op unramified global g, and I'll do the wrong version. And I have this functor of Poincaré. G um, kind of spectral run, and that goes, as I said, to quasi co. Uh, log sys g. So, so here is a conjecture. So now consider the irreducible locals inside. So let me do j upper star. It's a functor of restriction to the irreducible locus. So as Sasha remarked, so this map is not proper, but it's proper over the irreducible locus. And in this, so this com is, is the solvable. Yeah. And so <laughs> this what? And so this composed functor has a right adjoint, which is given by j lower star. And then you follow this diagram backwards. You do upper shriek and lower star. Let me call this coefficient spectral. See, the functor of coefficient spectral is always defined. You can always do vi upper sh shriek and v u i lower star. It's just these functors that are joined only over the so only over the reducible locus. I mean, you know what it is. Local systems don't, don't admit a reduction to the real. Again, if to a parabolic. Again, for any map, you have both low f lower star and f upper chic. They they are just adjoint only if the map is proper. So the, again, the functor of coefficient is defined, but it's not adjoint to Poincaré away from the reducible locus. So now I want to state the conjecture. So the conjecture is that coefficient g spec is fully faithful. It implies that, but implies mo much more. Well, exactly. It's, so remember the statement that quasi co rep g check went fully faithfully into this rep g run. Yeah. It's also put fully faithful. Can it, how can you say what it's equivalent to? It's well, you can. Pardon me? Contractible. It's all contractible. All contractible means just the all has no kind of homology. Yes. Just yeah. yeah. O yeah so o is, is this kind of just equivalent to this case. Yes. So now this is a theorem for GLN. For G equals GLN, and it's the same kind of stuff as we said that kind of this Whitaker extended Whitaker with, was fully faithful and well, the same proof, not surprisingly, works on the spectral side to prove that this is fully faithful. So for all classical groups, it's the theorem of Tomer and Kajdan. It's not quite that. So, so there's a very related theorem, but it's not an O version, but the Durand version of this. So basically here, so what they did, they considered, well, again, along the lines of Sam's talk, they considered not the space, but the space. Not this category, but you. OK, they proved something. So this conjecture is very, very plausible for classical groups because of the result of Tomer and Kajdan. But it doesn't quite apply that. Let me just not say any, anything more. 
Pardon me? No, this conjecture is supposed to happen always. It's just the adjunction happens in the reducible locus. So, so if. Uh, what, the conjecture? Oh, no, no, it's, 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 it's an open conjecture for arbitrary groups. But if you believe this conjecture, it tells you that, so the corollary of the conjecture is that this Poincare series functor generates, composed with J lower upper star, generates quasi co of loxis G check, loxis G irreducible. So that's what we, that's the input we want. So like there are many, so like this spectral Poincare series generates a lot. And this kind of, that's what we needed. And again, follows from the conjecture. All right, I'm really behind the schedule. Okay, so what I've done, I've constructed this Poincare series functor but now this, this fundamental diagram that appeared at the beginning of my talk, and I had to prove its commutativity. So, so just faith, not not faithful, um, conservative. conservative. Conservative is enough to, for the corollary. Conservativity is that. Yes, but if you look at the. Uh, true. So, th what these guys prove is sufficient for conservativity. So for the classic. So, so, the, the quor so, they do prove the corollary. Corollary is true for. So because of the, their theorem, it's, it's true for a classical groups, in, indeed. And, and coefficient goes from the irreducible part? Or no, coefficient is always defined. It's, it's, it's ah. not a joint of Poincare away from the irreducible part. Ah. All right. So I still have to prove the commutativity of the diagram, but because of the time, so I won't perform it. It's a super fun proof. Um, but okay, it's, I wrote it in the notes, so I mean, it's it's fun. Um, get kind of, there are two geometric ingredients. It's it's not tautological. It's um, all right. I guess I'll stop, and we'll have. Yeah, so it makes. So, okay, I stop here, and Dima will use this to, to wrap everything up. <laughs>